I'm John Miglosh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about data. The new concept, brand new, because Google and Facebook have allowed you to see into the way they store and search things, is called big data. Okay? And big data is what everybody wants and what everybody wants to analyze. And studies are showing now that though 85% of companies are piling up more data, their ability to predict what their customers are going to do, their ability to identify new markets, has not improved in spite of the dramatic storage requirements. Now why is that? Well, back in the day when I grew up with data, we didn't have big data. We, in fact, when I started, we didn't have any data. We would have to convince people to save customer data other than the address so that we could tell if someone bought twice and when they bought the last time. Uh, the old RFM, I remember convincing people to pile it up and someday we'll figure out how to use it. Well, the data that we used was what I'll call purchase data. It was the stuff that people bought. So in a Cabela's, there was 60,000 SKUs and we would know if you were a hunter or you were a fisherman or you bought camping or footwear or muzzle loaders, whatever you did. And so that helped us predict through the seasons what offers might be most relevant to you. And that actually did work and um, if you look at my book, you'll see it, it made them a lot of money. But the, well, I'll call that hard data, okay? And to this day, if someone, we did work with GM credit card and we could see that someone had gone to Walmart and spent $235, but what did they buy? Now it was nicer if they bought a ticket uh, at United Airlines because we knew that was at least travel instead of Walmart. The trouble is, is that we didn't know where they went and going to Cincinnati is different than going to Cancun, at least for me. So we take this hard data concept and we say, okay, how much of that hard data, which actually can be predictive given a lot of work, again, we're not going to cover that today. How much of the big data is hard data? And I would argue that a very small percent. What most of it is, is something that I call soft data. Okay, now what's soft data? Well, today I was looking for some SD cards for this little nifty camera that we've got running here and I wanted 16 gig and I wanted the big size not the little teeny ones because they fall on the carpet and I can't find them so I went on a bunch of sites and 90% of it wasn't what I was looking for and I'm clicking and clicking and clicking, and clicking a couple of weeks ago I noticed if I searched that was for a tripod that day I searched on Amazon and then when I'm the next day on other sites all of a sudden they're showing me tripods unfortunately for them I'd already bought it not on Amazon and so a lot of the data that they're saving is data that is not not something I really that that, that you know it's like it happenstance. It's like while I'm walking through Costco with my wife, I'm looking at olives stuffed with garlic, but I would never buy them. And so we have all of this data and it's and it who my friends are on Facebook and whether I'm on Pinterest and whether I'm on LinkedIn and all these sorts of things connected all together. And the truth is, you know, half those people I don't really even know anyway. You know, they're they're my neighbors. Uh, daughter who's in junior high because I don't know what you you did that sort of thing M don't we won't get into that anyway nice kids the uh, it helps you figure out what the parents are up to so the point is is that this soft data is very difficult to make work and unless you have the hard data to figure out what soft data makes any sense you know data is not going to reveal itself to you and so the principle is, and the reason and the explanation that big data is not providing the returns that people expect, is because most of it is soft data, and the soft data needs to link to the hard data. The best example I, I can give about how difficult it is to predict the future is, let's say I was outside of Walmart and you were coming in, and I said, tell me all the things you'd like to buy. 
What are you planning to buy? And let's say you even had a list. And I have met one or two people that actually have lists and never deviate. But that's not me. And most people, 90, 99% of the people will say, true, I sort of have an idea. Okay, so well, we're gonna write them down. Now you're gonna go in and out you come and let's see if it matches. What are the chances? One in a hundred for me or less. Because though I know everything about me, I, I think I do. I know a lot about me, a lot more than a database would know about me. I'm not even able to predict me knowing as much as I know about me because, because it's variable stuff. Life happens. So if you can't predict you knowing all you know about you, what are the chances of me with primarily soft data I'm going to be able to predict you? The answer is very slim. Okay, And so given that predicament, we want to focus in our big data, we want to focus most of our effort on hard data. Once we figure that out, once we're getting a return on investment, which doesn't require gigabytes of cloud, by the way, or terabytes of cloud, once we get that to predict, then we can work on the soft data and find the nuances in it. Okay? So that's your lesson for today. I'm John Miglosh. Have fun with your data.